Hello and welcome to Aviation Abbey. Go where you feel the most alive. Today we'll be talking about some difficult aviation terminologies which you must have come across while going through articles on aviation or while listening to lectures on aviation. We will try to make it easy for you referring to ICAO NX14 that is aerodrome. So let's get started. Before knowing anything about aviation, we need to know what aerodromes are. Aerodrome is a defined area on land or on water intended wholly or partially for the arrival, departure or surface movement of the aircraft. It also includes buildings, installations and equipments. By buildings, I mean the ATC tower, the terminal building, the cargo complex, etc. And by equipments and installations, I mean the localizer antenna, the glide path antenna, which together comprise the instrument landing system and help in air navigation. The next definition is that of a runway. Runway is a defined area on land aerodrome. Please note my point, it is on land aerodrome, intended for takeoff or landing operation of an aircraft. Now, there are certain runways that are used for takeoff operations only. These runways are called the takeoff runways. Now, let us consider an aerodrome which has a system of runways that is more than one runway. Let us consider the aerodrome at Mumbai that is Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj International Airport which has two cross runways. So, the runway 0927 is used in preference to the other runway that is 1432. So this runway that is 0927 is the primary runway at that aerodrome. Now the choice of primary runway depends on many factors like the direction of wind flow to that runway or the length of the runway usable for landing or takeoff operation. The next definition is that of a datum. Datum is a quantity or a set of quantities together which form a basis or a reference for determining other quantities. Next we will be talking about the ARP which is a very important determining factor for many quantities at an aerodrome. ARP stands for Aerodrome Reference Point. It is a designated location at an aerodrome. And this location is either the initial or planned geometric center of that aerodrome. Now this point is measured in degrees, minutes and seconds. Next we'll be talking about the aerodrome elevation. It is the elevation of the highest point on the landing area. You must have noted I use the term landing area. It is the area or it is the part of the movement area intended for takeoff or landing operations of an aircraft. To know what movement area is, please be along with us. Now we'll be talking about the aeronautical beacon. It is a beacon used to designate an aerodrome for identification from air. That is, a pilot coming in for landing to an aerodrome will be able to identify where the aerodrome is with the help of this beacon. Similarly, we have one more aid. We have the aerodrome identification sign which helps in identifying the aerodrome from air. Next, we'll be talking about the aerodrome traffic density which is the determining factor for various aerodrome maintenance checks. Now, before we understand what aerodrome traffic density is, we need to be aware of two terms. The number of movements in the mean busy hour. It is the arithmetic mean taken over a year, that is 365 days, of the total number of movements in the daily busiest hour. What does movement mean? Any takeoff or landing operation at an aerodrome comprises a movement. Now, the aerodrome traffic density is divided into three categories, light, medium and heavy. The traffic density is said to be light when the number of movements in the mean busy hour is less than 15 per runway or is less than 20 for the entire aerodrome. The traffic density is said to be medium 
when the number of movements in the mean busy hour is of the order of 16 to 25 per runway or is of the order of 20 to 35 for the entire aerodrome. Now the traffic density is said to be heavy when the total number of movements in the mean busy hour is more than 25 for each runway and is more than 35 for the system of runways at that aerodrome. Next, we'll be talking about the aeroplane reference field length. It is the minimum length of the runway that is required for takeoff of an aircraft at the following conditions. Maximum certified takeoff mass, sea level, the standard atmospheric conditions, the still air and at zero runway slope. So, these conditions are to be met when we calculate the aeroplane reference field length. The value of this is mentioned in the aeroplane flight manual. Now if these conditions change, suppose the temperature at an aerodrome increases, so the density of air around the aerodrome reduces. This means a greater length of the runway will be required for an aircraft to produce the requisite amount of lift to take off. Thus, the field length required increases, but the aeroplane reference field length refers to the minimum length of the runway that is required for takeoff of an aircraft. Next, we'll be talking about aeronautical ground lights. These are the lights that are present at an aerodrome that help in air navigation, but they exclude the lights that are present on an aircraft. Next, we'll be talking about declared distances. There are four declared distances. The first one is TORA or the take off run available. It is the total length of the runway that is available and suitable for the ground run of an aeroplane. The next declared distance is that of TODA that is take off distance available. It includes the TORA plus the clearway. So what is a clearway? Clearway is a defined rectangular area on ground or water under the control of appropriate authority selected or prepared to be suitable for the aircraft to make a portion of its initial climb. To explain this, let us consider this to be a runway and this to be the clearway. So this clearway is present at the end of Tora and it is a rectangular area over which the aircraft can make a portion of its initial climb. So together the TORA and the CLEOWAY together comprise of the TORA. The next is the accelerate stop distance available or the ASDA. It is the length of TORA plus the length of stopway. So stopway is a defined area on land aerodrome. Like I mentioned, clearway can be on land as well as on water, but stopway is only on land. So stopway is a defined area on land aerodrome intended to stop an aircraft in case of an abandoned takeoff. It is present at the end of Torah. So let this be the stopway now and this is your runway. So length of Torah plus the length of stopway together comprise the accelerate stop distance available. Now the next and the fourth declared distance is the landing distance available or LDA. It is the length of the runway that is declared available and suitable for landing. To understand what is the difference between TORA and LDA, we have to understand the concept of displaced threshold. What is a threshold? Threshold is the beginning of that portion of the runway that is usable for landing. Sometimes this threshold may not be located at the extremity of the runway due to certain conditions like noise abandonment procedures, strength of the runway, obstacles present just before the runway which do not allow an appropriate glide slope. So because of these conditions, sometimes a threshold has to be positioned away from the extremity of the runway to a certain distance and this threshold formed is a displaced threshold and the length for which the threshold has been displaced is used for takeoffs for landing rollout but not for touchdown it may also be used for taxing of the aircraft next we'll be talking about the runway strip it is an area including the runway and the stopway 
that is used to reduce risk of damage to an aircraft during takeoff or landing operations and also to reduce risk of damage to an aircraft in case of running off the runway. It extends on both sides of the center line to a distance of 140 meters and to a distance of 60 meters from the end of the runway threshold or the stopway. Hope I could help you out with the difficult terminologies related to IQ NX14. If you like our work, do like, share and subscribe because your support is our motivation.